like to first thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share certain views and ideas which have gone through my career. So far, the talks have been all business and money. My talk is concerning health, since I'm a gynecologist. When I joined the medical college, which was in the 40s, 48 when I joined, the scenario was completely different. No ultrasound, no uh, say modern AIDS, few blood tests could be done, and an X-ray could be taken with a lot of worry because of radiation. And then what struck me most was that when I was working as a junior resident in a hospital, at that time, maternal mortality was something very, very high. And everybody endeavored to bring it down. And one of the main causes of maternal mortality, nearly 20%, was due to termination of pregnancies done by unskilled under very aseptic conditions. Uh, under very septic conditions, and they will land up in hospitals with fever, and most of them, most of them, I would say 50% would lose their life. And so much so that in Wadia Hospital, Wadia Maternity was one of the main women's hospital in the city of Bombay, where I was working as a junior resident. We had a 20-bedded ward which catered to these unfortunate ladies who were caught with unwanted pregnancies and had to undergo termination by a crack. And that kept me bothering a lot. Then after finishing my postgraduate studies here, I went to UK. The difference in UK was that the laws were liberal. A person could step into a hospital if they wanted to avoid an unplanned pregnancy and get it terminated scientifically. So the maternal mortality from 20 out of 100 due to termination of pregnancy fell to 2 out of 100 for terminating pregnancy. So can you imagine how many lives were saved? In India, I returned in 63. And the first thing I started working on it, okay, how would we be able to prevent unnecessary avoidable deaths of young girls, young women, age group 20 to 25? And the first thing that was to be done was to prevent the pregnancy. Much better to prevent it than go for a termination. So I worked on, I was associated luckily by the time with WHO and all. So we had a contraceptive not available in India called the copper teak, which is now the new model. It was at that time Lipis Loop, a plastic coil, which if inserted can work for five years, seven years, 10 years. And when and how a pregnancy was to be planned, one could just remove it. So first, I designed an intrauterine device. And then we started a clinic doing terminations of pregnancy with valid reasons. When people would come and inquire, we would thoroughly investigate them, thoroughly talk to them, advise them. And the important point we followed was we created a team of doctors. When I got to associate with the family planning associate and team of doctors and advising them. It's very easy if it is early to terminate. The safety is very high. If one waits till the fourth month, fifth month, one can terminate, but the safety is very, very low. Uh, nearly 50% at that time would be losing their life because of no antibiotics available at that time. Penicillin came in after 60. Chloromycetin came in after 65. So at that time, the antibiotics were not really available. 
sulfur was the only antibiotic freely available and economical. So that we had to rely on very, very clean practice to prevent infection. And that way, we started the clinic and free, completely free. The people had to pay only for their stay and only for their medications. Unfortunately, at that time, mortality was high, and especially when women came with the fourth or fifth pregnancy. I'll give an incident why we were forced to do help in certain situations. A gentleman from UP, a laborer, came to the clinic and narrated the whole story that he has been working in Bombay, wife is in UP, and unfortunately, his elder brother was the culprit to cause the problem. And he said that if you doctors could help me to stop this pregnancy, I'll keep my wife. I know it's not her fault. But if she goes to full term, my reputation in my village will be so spoiled that I'll have to throw her out of the house. So we had a group, small group, and we discussed. And we said, no, we should help. And we called her over. And, we, and she was already, by the time, five months. And at that time, there was an injection under trial, which if you could inject, the pregnancy could be terminated. And we gave that injection. It went very well. She was quite upright. Next day morning, unfortunately, that injection caused an embolus. Embolus means from the uterine cavity, the fluid, amniotic fluid, got into bloodstream and went into her heart, and she dropped dead. We had to report it to the coroner. Coroner is a guy who supervises all the deaths taking place in the city and gives the final verdict any suspicion they would be carrying out post-mortem or calling a uh, jury to prevent, say, uh, for, um, um, uh, deaths created by negligence. That was the main reason. When I went to the coroner, I was really petrified you know, because he was alone, I was alone, and he started reading the whole case history. Then he sat there for a minute or two, just looking at me. <laughs> and that was quite a frightening situation. Then he said, how much did you charge? Because at that time, doctors were known that this practice was a gold mine. They could charge what they wanted, and people were forced to pay. So he just looked at me and said, how much did you charge? I said, nothing. He said, are you sure nothing? I said, yes, I brought the husband with me. He's sitting outside. So he again sat for another minute looking at me. And then he just took the papers and signed with no postmortem. Because that sort of a support we got even from the lawmakers, if you are true to what you want to do. And it's not the financial or monetary things in life which are important. They give you pleasure. But the greater pleasure you get in doing what you want to do and help the public in whatever little way you can. And we had two such occasions, both the time and different coroner and the same sort of a story. But we were lucky that they did not push us more into the courts and jurisdiction. And at that time, the law was straight away 10-year imprisonment. It was the law so rigid and stiff. Then around 69, the government realized, because the first country to liberalize the law was Russia and East Europe. And that was in the 30s. Then China came second. Then UK came in the 40s to liberalize the laws. And you'll be surprised 
still there are countries or states in the country which have not liberalized the law. And US is one of them. US is one of them. We have a lot of problems because they were giving some funds for family planning and population. But the moment they knew that we were also terminating pregnancies, all the funds were taken away. And even that law in the US is being practiced in some of the states. That in America, absolutely very difficult. And so many women have lost their lives. So in 69-70, the Indian government constituted a team to go around different countries where the laws were liberalized. And it was all government officials. The government knew that we were doing it. Therefore, I was selected as a member of that team. And we went to UK, went to Yugoslavia, where the laws were liberal, went to South America, and studied each and every country, and managed to push the government, push the government, so that in 1972, the laws are there, but they are liberalized, so that any person caught with an unwanted pregnancy can go to a hospital and has to be given free service compulsorily. So that there was no question of any money. And in FPA, we started clinics. And slowly, from Bombay, the whole thing spread it to all over India. And so that now, the maternal mortality in India, instead of being very high due to termination of unwanted pregnancies has been brought down tremendously. And these are all women around 20. So my message is, okay, if you believe in something, if you have watched something being done which is not right, don't be frightened. You have to raise your voice. You have to raise your, and don't try to be single. Keep a team with you. And with the teamwork, you will achieve whatever you wish to do. And now I feel so happy that in India, um, anywhere I go, the gynecologists immediately recognize and immediately come and congratulate for whatever was done in the 60s. Thank you. Thank you for the patient listening. Thank you.